the first Cheviot lambs of the year. For the male lambs who get one of these on their testicles. I keep getting so overexcited, but it's lambing time. We're allowed to be overexcited. This is living the dream. Good morning, sheep fans. Cammy's the name. Sheep is, of course, the game. We are on, I'm thinking class this is day four, although tomorrow's actually the due date for lambing. So it's maybe a little bit early to be calling it day four. But I'm out checking the Cheviots this morning. Another fantastic morning. The forecast, the weather forecast is really good for the next few days. So we're excited about that. And we've got our first Cheviot has lambed. I'm just making my way around here to try and get round just to get a look. Not because there's any problems. I can see they're fine, but just because I love sheep and I just want to get a wee close look at the first Cheviot lambs of the year. So I'm just going to leave her, she's just getting stressed, they're really wild these Cheviots, they've never been fed or anything So they don't like much human interaction, so I'm just going to leave her, that's just stressing them out But it's great to see, like it's such a buzz, like I, I personally buzz, I say buzz a lot I personally buzz much more off of that, like you know a couple of lambs up and soaked outdoors Than like lambing inside, it just it has a purpose lambing inside and if the weather's bad I would love to be inside but this is perfect for me just a beautiful morning sheep spitting the lambs out and getting on with it out on the grass ah oh, it's a dream and we are into the shed I was going to say it's all quiet but they've heard me coming and they know that it's near feeding time this is the ones that we tubed yesterday and this is the wee lamb that's just not quite right but hungry We'll give it a feed just now. You're the one, you're the dead one last. You're ready for the field. Field today, don't panic. These good triplets. We're going to need to lift one off you last because we don't send any threes out. Something you'll see when watching my videos is I never send a three out to the field. Always two max. So, although they're, you know, mums are making a good job of both these sets of triplets, I'll lift a lamb off each. I should explain that, of course, I'm just saying that as if, uh, let me just go here so there's a bit less noise. So essentially, the ewe has two teats, one either side, which is perfect for two lambs. When you have three lambs, now a ewe can rear three lambs, but what happens is there's always going to be a bit of a struggle or a fight to get into those teats. And essentially what happens is all three lambs then suffer a little bit as a result and don't do so well. Now I have a, a, a handful of singles in here, there's 20 odd, 30 singles maybe, in here and about 20 sets of triplets. So what I'll do, and we'll have problems as well, there'll be some twins that have problems and there's always other reasons you need a spare lamb. So I'll lift these lambs off their mum, which doesn't sound great, I know. But then those lambs will then be adopted onto another mum who just has one lamb. So then she'll go out the door with two and they'll have as much milk as they want and they'll have a great time drinking heaps of milk without having to fight with two other siblings. So I'm just gonna do the boring stuff just now. I'm gonna water these pens, feed these roaring beasts, and um, make sure everything's got water, etc., etc. So we'll get that all done. So here's something interesting that I found out when I started working with, uh, with Heinegger, who are another great company that are supporting the channel. And you're gonna see heaps about that in the summer. But before we get to the summer, we have this important job to do. Illustrator, I think that's how you pronounce it, Illustrator, Illustrator, they're actually owned by Heinegger as well. Heinegger, Australia. So obviously, as always with Heinegger, you know you're getting a great quality product. I'm going to open the lid. There we go. Beautiful. Heinegger quality checked. So that's another important part of the process of flaming ewes inside the lambs get marked. We call it marking, you might call it tailing, docking, I suppose there's a few words for it. But essentially they get their tails rung, they get one of these antiseptic rubber rings put on their tail, that restricts the blood flow, essentially it helps the tail, helps the tail, it causes the tail to drop off without any infection or any harm to the lamb. Now, of course, there is going to be 
a little bit of discomfort when this fuss goes on. But it's a funny one, it's like, can I anything like that? Like if you put it in your finger, it's like sore at first, but then as the pressure builds and the blood flow stops, you actually stop feeling it. And you'll see with these lambs that as it goes on their tails, they might give their tail a wee shake at first. And then within five, 10 minutes, they're cracking on as if nothing ever happened. The same goes for the male lambs who get one of these on their testicles. Now this is done at this young age before their testicles are very well developed. And again, it's gonna nip for five, 10 minutes, but they then fall off and they don't feel anything. And it's a safe way of doing it without cause of any infection. So why do we do that? And the main reason for ringing the male lamb's testicles is because the males and the females all run together. And what happens is they develop and become a bit more sexually mature as they get older within the next four months or so, they can then start working. And what will happen is they'll be jumping over all the females in the field and we'll have lambs all over the place come February, March. And bear in mind, these lambs here that are born out of these meal yows, these are all destined for the food chain. These are all lambs that will be going to the meat market. They'll be sold as prime lambs or store lambs through the ring. So we don't want any of them becoming pregnant because that is detrimental to our system here. And th now there's other options to that. Other people might say, you know, why don't you split the male and female lambs? And that can be done. But from a management point of view, it's a nightmare because if you have a field of 100, 200 top, top lambs, as they develop and come into season and things change through the winter, come November time, say, they're all going to start fighting with each other. If you have a female anywhere near them, they'll be breaking through fences, jumping gates. They'll, the rams just become purely focused on getting to those females, fighting with each other to prove the, who the dominant male is and it is just carnage. So the best option is to ring them now at this young age, it nips for 10 minutes, and then they run on fine, and we'll show you that. I should probably explain, some people asking why do we actually take the tails off? And the big reason for that is to do with things like uh, the tails getting dirty and fly strike, been a major issue here in Scotland. So we'll quite often take the tails off for that reason. Some breeds, like your hill breeds, will have the tails left on because they really need it for the harder winters out in the hill. They use their long tails to essentially stand with their back to the wind and it stops the, the wind blowing up through underneath them. This one's a dirty bump. Like you see it better. You're, you're just putting the, the band, holding a lamb just loosely between your legs here. Don't squeeze at the shoulders here. Don't squeeze its wee belly because that's full of milk there. And you just pull the, the sack through. You're watching, there's these wee teats, wee nipples at the side here. You don't want to be catching them in your rubber band. So you just pull through, put your hands all side. You can squeeze a little bit if you need to pop a nut through. You feel, make sure you've got the two well through, your ring's far enough on that it's not squeezing any in the middle. And that's it. It's giving a wee wiggle there. Obviously it's a wee bit sensitive at first. But as I say, 10 minutes and they're neither here nor there. And the tail, I just put it on backwards. Just personal preference, but it's better, and you flick it off. Make sure with the tail that you're, you're not making them so short, you want to make sure it's still going to cover its uh, rear bits once the tail falls off. I mentioned, next thing you do is I put a, we spray the lambs and the ewe, I just do the twins really, um, and that idea is these are going out in the trailer, so as I put them out in the field, I can put the two lambs and let the ewe out, and it also helps if they get mismothered, and when I'm doing my rounds, I can see if there's a sheep just standing with one lamb, and I'll find that other lamb somewhere. I know she's a twin, she should have an R lamb. We'll go look, we'll find the lamb, dead easy. I know that 24 goes with 24. Or in this case, that's gonna be number one. Hey, lammy. <laughs> that's actually the only number that I can do tidy. That and 11. <laughs> that's another, uh, Another flashback to my youth is my father coming in for doing the rounds in the evening, going, you need to, do, what is it, it says, it says, you need to be tidier with your numbers. I can hardly read the bloody things. All go, all go. Nothing else has lambed, but uh, I want this cleared up. We had some wet days and this got really mucky and the forecast is good for the foreseeable. So we're going to scrape all this wet stuff up here. So this is still a nice dry bit for the sheep to stand and sit at nights. Gives them that little bit more space until they start lambing out.
I'll say it all the time through this lambing period and these lambing vlogs. It's not a perfect dream farm setup, but it's good enough for the job I'm trying to do. And when you're renting sheds and different things, it's hard to get the perfect setup and make it work. No, well, you can make it work, but we'll get the dream set up one day. Great, having a big bit of kit like that. It's handy having Paul here with a Manitou. Is that a Manitou? No, it's a Merlo. I don't know these things because I'm just a sheep man. But it's great having him here with that big bucket, two scoops and just about all of it done. So I'll just get a shovel just now and start doing the corners. I'll get a hand if you want, we managed to get it in all right. Right, right, that'll do. Right, that'll do, that'll do. You're starting to lamp. Uh, right, yellow blue tags. I think she's thinking about lambing. Thought I'd just show you these lambs from before that were all wrung and tailed. Neither up nor down now. <laughs> it's kicking off now. We have our first lamb outside with the crosses. Now, I can actually see from a distance that there's two lambs here with their heads up, so I usually wouldn't bother going up to see, but oh, it's a combination of, it's obviously good to put it in the vlog, and I'm just excited to see what the first lambs are like outside. And what a day for it, it is starting to spit a rain a little bit, but it's very, very mild, which is great. There we go, guys. What about that? Honestly, I... <laughs> I keep getting so overexcited, but it's lambing time. We're allowed to be overexcited. Nothing beats that feeling. There's a good one crop, mule ewe, out in the grass, fired out two cracking big Texel lambs. Due date's tomorrow, so give or take a day. So that she's on her time, on her money. Nailers, I can see she's a big bag of milk there. She looks fit and well. Lambs are already up, trying to get. She's literally just spat these out. Because we were by here just an hour ago and they've just been spat out so I'm not going to hassle her I've hassled her a bit because the sheep follow me up thinking they're getting fed and now they're going to start wandering over there and be a pest so we'll just come away a little bit give her plenty of space I wouldn't even recommend the field as I said because I could see the two lambs are up so this is uh, and I think there's only a couple of triplets in here I think I have put a couple of non-eating triplets in here because if they don't eat like you'll see like that other one that's not milking she should have been in here but I just missed her Oh, honestly, what a feeling. Like you cannot you cannot beat that feeling. What are you? Beautiful. Put them in there with her. Had a feel. I couldn't feel anything else, but then I couldn't feel that triplet yesterday. No, that's okay. They, they, um, they look like a pair. I would say they look like a pair. This is uh, it's quite good, actually, because um, I did a bit for the vlog earlier where I pointed that sheep out and said she, she's going to lamb. Because I could see her, so I says, I says to the... You guys will remember that, I said the blue and yellow tags. Well, you will remember it because it was about one minute ago in this video, but I said she was going to lamb just the way she was sitting, and sure enough, she has. You know, we'll just... oh, I feel the belly there, that's fine. Milk here. Don't waste that good stuff, oh, I wasted a wee bit. But I've just burst the seal for you there. She's gallons of milk, that's good. All quiet here just now, so I'm going to use this time to get the trail loaded up and get some lambs away. This was a close one. Reverse right into that. And I think I've just stopped at the right time. There's certainly nothing broken. Yeah, I have, because it's actually only just hitting this. But, but I can't move that now, I can't get the door down, so. Mm. Oh wait, do you just do this? I'm not, I'm not a tractor guy or a cattle guy, so this is all.
I'd imagine you do pull that up, but it's on really tight, so I'm thinking maybe it's not meant to really be off. Or I'll just get a pole and do it. Change of plan, put that back on. Oh, no, I can't get it on because it's tight as hell. Right, I'm going to leave that, just hopefully I remember to tell the farmer that I started this nonsense. So this is my mother's garden, and this is actually where it all started for me five years ago when I bought four Texel hogs to put in that garden. And here we are with these two little lambs that I was tubing in the previous video. They've now had a day on the bottle and mum has been put out to grass to try and encourage the milk onto her. And being in the garden here, my mother can keep a close eye on her and top up the lambs as and when required. We'll follow her progress in future vlogs, but that's the end of this one. Thanks again for watching sheep fans. We'll see you tomorrow for the next one. What's this, what's this doing now? That's not been off for ages and it's now absolutely solid. I would think. It obviously slips out down for here.